Hello, and welcome to another edition of Orthopedic Sports Medicine Patient Educational Series with Dr. Adam Duraki. There are many different types of meniscal tears. In previous videos, we have discussed complex tears that are not really amendable to surgical repair that ultimately end up requiring a meniscectomy. The second type of meniscal tears are amendable to repair in which case we can go in and place sutures across the meniscus and do a formal meniscal repair. The third type of meniscal tears and the tears that I'd like to concentrate on in this video are meniscal root tears. A meniscal root tear is a very specific type of tear of the meniscus. The majority of the meniscus is attached to the knee along its periphery to the outer peripheral joint capsule. However, in two places of the meniscus, in the far back of the meniscus, in the far front of the meniscus, the meniscus is actually attached down to the floor of the joint. And it's these attachments that we call the meniscal roots. Specifically, the posterior roots can bear a lot of load or pressure. And with certain meniscal injuries, we see that patients tear their posterior root off of the floor of the joint. Let's take a closer look at the meniscus anatomy and where the roots are located. Okay, so this is a right knee. This is the outside or the lateral aspect of the knee. This is the inside or the medial aspect of the knee. When we look on the inside part of the knee, you have two meniscus, you have the medial and the lateral meniscus, and the meniscus is this C-shaped cartilage that goes around the outer portion of the joint all the way around to the back, again on both sides. The unique thing about a meniscal root is that there are only two places where the meniscus is actually attached to the floor. One is in the back or the posterior root, one is in the front or the anterior root. It is only at these two locations that the meniscus is actually attached to the floor. The remainder of the locations of the meniscus along the periphery are attached to the capsule along the outside all the way around the joint. Therefore, if you get a tear in your meniscus in this area, we're doing a traditional meniscal repair. But if the tear is at the root, then it's going to tear away from the floor of the joint and will require a root repair. If the meniscus is torn away from the floor in this location, then as you place weight across the knee, it'll simply push the meniscus out of the way so that it is no longer between the two bones and providing any sort of cushioning. Because of that, we will drill a hole up through the bone that will come out right up underneath the meniscus posterior root. We'll then put stitches into the root and bring the stitches down through the bone and reattach the stitches on the outside of the bone in the front. For more specifics regarding the meniscal root repair surgery, please refer to my video on meniscal root surgery. The primary function of the meniscus is to provide extra cushioning or shock absorption when you're playing sports or working out or going to work. In order for the meniscus to give you that shock absorption, it must be able to absorb your weight as you're placing weight across the knee. In order to prevent the meniscus from simply being pushed aside between the two bones, it needs to be anchored to the floor at the root. Patients that suffer a meniscal root tear no longer have their meniscus anchored to the floor. So when you place weight across the knee, the meniscus is simply pushed out away from between the two bones and no longer provides any cushioning or shock absorption as it should. In fact, when you look at the contact forces between the two bones of your knee, a meniscus root tear has the same effect on the forces felt on the bone as removing the entire meniscus. Because of that, a meniscal root tear can have a dramatic effect on the amount of forces that the knee feels even with normal walking. 
the long-term consequence of an untreated meniscal root tear then is rapid development of post meniscectomy osteoarthritis. There have been multiple studies that have documented that patients that lose their meniscal root attachment have significantly increased forces across their knee joint that ultimately leads to rapid development of osteoarthritis of the knee. Because of that, we recommend that meniscal root tears are fixed surgically. The surgery to repair a meniscal root tear is very different than that of traditional meniscal surgery. In the other two types of meniscal surgeries, we discussed either removing a torn piece of the meniscus or suturing a torn meniscus back to itself. With a meniscal root repair, we actually need to reaffix the meniscus back down to the floor of the knee. In order to do that, we must drill up through the floor with a little pin, place sutures into the end of that meniscus, and then pass the sutures down through the little drill hole of the pin in order to physically suture or pull the meniscus down into the floor to get it to heal. This procedure can be done arthroscopically through two little poke holes in the front of the knee. You do need a little incision down in the front of the leg in order for the pin to be placed up through the bone. Please refer to my video on meniscal root repairs to explore the specifics of the surgical procedure. On the day of your procedure, we do place numbing medication in your incisions following your surgery. Therefore, once you go home, you may be relatively comfortable. I recommend to patients, however, that they do not wait until they start to feel the pain to start taking their pain medication. I recommend that you start taking your pain medication one pill every four hours as soon as you get home, regardless of how much pain you're in. That way, once your numbing medication wears off, you already have that pain medicine in your system and you're trying to stay ahead of the pain. I recommend to patients that they ask their nurse when their last dose of pain medication was in the recovery room and then start four hours after that. I also recommend that you wake up every four hours overnight the first night after your surgery and take a pain pill. That way, just in case your numbing medicine wears off in the middle of the night, you have kept up with your pain medication. Once your numbing medication is worn off, and you know exactly how much pain or symptoms you're going to have, then I recommend to patients that they start to spread out their pain medication and only take the medication when they need it. Postoperatively, the recovery from a meniscal root repair is very different than the recovery from either a meniscectomy or a more traditional meniscal repair. Because we sutured the meniscus back down to the floor, and because patients placing weight on the knee tends to want to push the meniscus out of the way, any weight bearing after a meniscal root repair would tend to want to pull that repair out of the hole in the floor that we reattached it. Because of that, patients undergoing a meniscal root repair must be non-weight bearing following their procedure. Patients are typically non-weight bearing for the first four weeks following the procedure. Initially, I place patients in a hinged post-operative knee brace locked in full extension. You use crutches or a walker to maintain non-weight bearing on that leg for the first four weeks. The brace is to help protect the knee from recurrent injury if you were to fall. However, we do have you unlock the brace and start moving the knee immediately. Within the first four weeks following the procedure, I do limit range of motion from zero degrees or full extension to 90 degrees. We limit flexion angles greater than 90 degrees for the first month after the procedure so as not to put too much pressure on the posterior root or the root in the back of the knee. Because you are not placing any weight on your knee within the first month following a meniscal root repair, you can't do any rehab related exercises that place weight across the knee either, which means that you cannot begin any traditional 
quadriceps strengthening exercises such as lunges, squats, or leg presses. Because of that, the knee after a meniscal root repair becomes much weaker and undergoes much more deconditioning than the knee after a simple meniscectomy or meniscal repair. At four weeks post-op, you return to my office and we discuss beginning to weight bear on the knee. Because patients have not experienced any weight bearing on their leg for a month, we initially begin weight bearing in the post-operative hinge knee brace. The hinge knee brace is designed to allow for greater and greater degrees of knee flexion angles. So we'll slowly start dialing the brace back as you gain more confidence and strength in your knee. However, even during the second month of post-operative rehabilitation, we are not allowing any quadriceps strengthening or leg strengthening exercises in knee flexion angles greater than 90 degrees. In other words, if you're going to do a leg press, for example, you will start at zero and bring it down to 90 and then back out without going deep down into knee flexion. This again helps to protect the repair from excessive amount of stress in deep flexion angles. Patients are usually successful in being able to wean themselves from the post-operative hinge knee brace within the first week or two of beginning full weight bearing. Patients often find that they can come out of the brace for an hour or two, however, because of fatigue and not having confidence in the leg, they often have to go back into the brace at that time. As time goes on, you gain additional confidence in your leg where you can start to spend greater and greater amounts of time out of the hinge knee brace. At two months post-op, we will reevaluate you in the office. At that time, we'll see how your transition away from the brace is gone and how the very early phases of strengthening exercises have gone. I'm also hoping and expecting that you have regained all of the passive range of motion in the knee. At two months post-op, I then continue patients with their early phase strengthening exercises. I do allow strengthening into greater degrees of knee flexion angles. And we also begin the use of a stationary bike without resistance. I will then re-examine the knee at three months following a meniscal root repair. At three months post-op, I begin to allow patients to advance to stationary bike activities with resistance, as well as beginning exercises on an elliptical machine and basic walking on a treadmill. Also will allow some freestyle swimming at that time. However, patients are still not running at three months and there are no jumping, cutting, or pivoting activities. It is not until five months after a meniscal root repair will I allow patients to begin an interval running program, will actually start jogging. The interval running program is established to slowly build in endurance as well as to build in intensity and distance of your workouts, but to do so in a safe and manageable way. By six months post-op, I will allow patients to start transitioning back into sports. Patients need to demonstrate that they have fully regained full strength and confidence in the leg and be able to prove that they can protect the knee from future injury prior to returning to sports. I hope this video has helped you to better understand meniscal root tears, their diagnosis, and how we treat them. I know that the rehab and recovery from meniscal root tears can be much longer than other types of meniscal surgeries. At the end of the day, however, the consequences of not performing your meniscal root repair are simply too high to the long-term health of your knee. Although the rehab process can be a long process, rest assured that you have the full backing of the Quincy Medical Group Department of Orthopedics as well as your physical therapist. Together, we can ensure that your journey is a successful one. Thank you and have a good day.